Howdy, howdy, folks. It is Diecast Buffet here again, and check that out. One of the craziest Texas races probably ever, and Tyler Reddick gets his third career Cup Series win. What a wild race. I mean, my goodness. That, you sure they didn't run a 600-mile race and not a 500-mile race? What an interesting race. There's going to be a lot of topic about the tire failures and who could have won, you know, who could have won the, uh, you know, I'm sorry, I'm tired. It's been a long race. Chase Elliott crashing out. All the different drivers had an opportunity to win. But for the race win diecast, guys, make sure to pre order that 124 scale diecast over there at our friends at Circle B Diecast. You can use the code Diecast Buffet and you can save on shipping, guys. I don't think a 164 is going to be made, but I hope they do. That would be cool. All right, so probably on paper, the most, I would say, plain race of the playoffs would be the Texas 500. But I tell you what, this would have been a glorified all-star race without the battle of attrition that we've seen, the tire failures. My goodness, the tire failures. And the thing is, you're going to have two types of fans. You're going to have fans that are going to be very upset over it. They're going to be uh, very disgruntled and angry about it. They're going to be referencing the Brickyard uh, Goodyear fiasco. And then you're going to have fans who are going to be like, man, this, is, this really felt like an old-school NASCAR race because... You know, back in the, the early Sprint Cup days in the COT, even back in the Gen 4 Winston Cup days, you would see a battle of attrition every week. Every week, an engine would blow up, a, a, a brake failure, suspension part would break. It was You would have 10, 12 cautions sometimes every week. There was, what, like 16 cautions tonight. I mean, it's it crazy. It's crazy, right? They would go out there, run 30 laps, have a tire failure. Uh, numerous drivers from all the manufacturers had issues with the tires. And i got to be honest with you guys. I don't have a problem with it. I really don't. Sure, they need to fix it, but at the same time, I like the battle of attrition. It creates strategy. It creates parity. And my driver wrecked out, so you, you know I'm not being biased with this, but it creates parity. It, 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 you know, it makes drivers like Michael McDowell and Justin Haley and Noah Gregson and, heck, even Todd Gillen run up in the front because some of the big names in the sport are out of the race. It creates parity, and to me... That's what I love to see. I love seeing strategy. You had drivers who were scared. They pitted. <laughs> how many chat? How many times did Ross Chastain pit at the end of the race? Right. I know they had damage, but then you have some drivers that are just risking everything trying to win this race. If Tyler Reddick would have pitted, he would never won this race because Joey Logano would have won it. Right. So, I love to see it. I have no problem with it. It's part of racing. It, it has. It has been a part of racing. Battle of attrition has been a part of racing. And whether we want to admit it or not, this race would have been the glorified all-star race, except it would have been three to four times longer with extremely mundane green flag runs with next to no passing for the lead. That's what it would have been. This track races very similar to how Gen 6 raced in 2021. That's how it is. The cars get close to each other, you can't pass, and then there's just kind of this bubble effect and after the restart, 10, 15, 20 laps, nothing happens. That's basically what it is. It's not the race cars. It's not the, the track uh, conditions, that, you know, the temperature and whatnot. It's, it's the, the racetrack itself. Ever since they reconfigured this track, almost every single fan says the track sucks because they reconfigured one and two. They screwed it up. They did the Kentucky Project, right? Go back to the last 25 years of the sport. And name one successful track of the top three series that has reduced the banking on their racetracks. Name one successful track. Comment down below. Because if you think about it, Kansas, New Hampshire, Las Vegas, Atlanta, Homestead. I mean, they've all increased banking at one point and another. So my point is, is that Kentucky reduced their banking or screwed it up, made it oblong, one, you know, one in from the other. They're not on the schedule anymore as of right now. Everybody wants Texas removed off, off the schedule because of how poor the racing is, not only for open wheel, but for stock cars as well. We know there's change coming. We know there's going to be some sort of a, a, a repave or something in the future, right? Whether that's going to be a super speedway or not. If you ask me if I had to pick right now today, I would just say, just go back to the 2016 configuration. Just go back to it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Let's make it extremely fast and let's market it like that. Make it the, the fastest track outside of Daytona or Talladega or Michigan or whatever. That's what I would do. And I guarantee you this race would have felt so much like the Coca-Cola 600 where you had so many crashes, so much hard racing, you didn't get that. 
What you got is a crap load of cautions from tire issues and spin outs and stuff. The race would have had caution still, even if it was a 2016 configuration with new asphalt. But you would have also had great quality racing. On the restarts, yes, you would get quality of racing. When you had some guys stay out and they would hang around up front and guys would come and go, yes, you had high quality racing. But overall, the racing product lacked because this is what the track is. We see it in the All-Star Race. The All-Star Race was absolutely hands down the worst race of the year. And this was just a longer version of that. If you if you remove all the, uh, the, the, the tire issues, the cautions, the wrecks, that's pretty much what it is. Um, you don't want to see tire issues, right? You don't want to see people slamming the wall, but it is a part of the sport, right? I'm not going to sit here and, and whine and cry about it and say that, oh, th- th- you know, this is the Brickyard fiasco or we need to... We need to just, you know, do whatever, get rid of the next-gen car. This Gen 4s did this at time or two. Gen 6 had issues like this a time or two. COTs had this issue a time or two. Maybe not as drastic, but battle of attrition is something that has been a NASCAR for not only decades, but generations. And personally, I like to see it. It makes it more interesting. Again, my guy wrecked out. <laughs> His car was burning in the infield, uh, and, and, and I still uh, enjoy the, the battle of attrition. With all that being said, though, was the race good? The racing quality? No. But the, 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 the crashes, the action, the, the pit drama, all that stuff? Absolutely. It was exciting. <laughs> um, but I don't know. So Tyler Reddick wins. He's officially the fourth non-playoff driver, even though he was a playoff driver last Saturday night or the previous Saturday night. But my point is that all four of the playoff races have been won by non-playoff drivers, which is like... Crazy, because we go to two wild card races next. You have Talladega, you have the Roval. Anything can happen there. I picked Denny Hamlin to win the race. <laughs> Denny Hamlin and William Byron, I hope they create some sort of a rivalry. That'd be really interesting. Could you imagine if, like, Byron, Hamlin, and Chastain won spot at Martinsville, like, five laps to go, and they're all in the top five or something? That would be cool. <laughs> but anyways, guys, make sure to pre-order that race win diecast if you're a Tyler Reddick fan. I know I sound extremely tired. I'm on like five hours of sleep, four hours of sleep. I've been watching football all day, watching racing. The race went on for like six hours, and I love it. We need more like 500-mile races, guys. I wish, since they since they pretty much reconfigured Atlanta, can we please get like a 500-mile race at Kansas? Can we please get a 500-mile race at Las Vegas? Like, have a 400 in the spring, have a 500 in the playoffs, something like that, right? Because 500-mile racing at these at these one-and-a-half-mile joints are incredible because you see so much battle of attrition. It's it, it's fun. It's entertaining. It, like, if this race had no tire failures, guys, let's just be honest with ourselves, regardless how you feel about it, this would have been a glorified all-star race. There would have been next to nothing happening. Instead of having 16 cautions, they probably would have had maybe five or six cautions, and one guy would have probably led 230 laps. Let's just be honest. So, in a way, it was kind of the best thing to happen, right? But then again, it's like, you don't want to see guys turning hard right in the wall like Cody Ware. That was an unbelievably scary wreck. And it reminded me so much of Mark Martin's Michigan crash uh, back in the Gen 5 days. Because he almost hit the pit wall. Like, that was scary, yo. They need to do something with the, the crush panels on these cars because every driver's talking about it. The cars are too rigid. They're, they're too stiff. Someone's going to get hurt, guys. We don't want to see that. So they need to find a way to get these cars to crumble up more safely like the Gen 6 cars. The Gen 6 cars were easily the safest stock car ever made. Let's just be honest. I mean... If you go 2013 to 2021, it is hands down easily the safest era in NASCAR racing. Not even close. They need to find a way to get that fixed. They they got to because you don't want to see guys getting hurt. Extremely scary incident with Cody Ware. So glad that he's okay. I hope he can race Talladega and all that good stuff. But you don't want to see guys taking extremely hard hits like that. I mean, if that was a Gen 6 car, the whole car would have crumbled a lot more. And, and it wouldn't have been that bad of an impact. With a Gen 6 or a Gen 7 car, these things, they don't have enough crush on. So they got to work on that, guys. What did y'all think about this insane endurance race at Texas Motor Speedway? Wow, Tyler Reddick gets it done. And this is what's interesting. 
No one's locked in. They're going to Talladega. They're going to the Roval. Chase Elliott is one bad pit stop away from being eliminated, pretty much. Anything can happen. It is going to be calamity. If you ha- if you can watch Talladega next Sunday and the Roval the week after, it's going to be good, guys. Don't miss it. Thank you all again for watching. Make sure to give the video a huge thumbs up, like, comment, and subscribe. we got more diecast to unbox next week, so if you're in for the reviews, stay tuned for that. So that's all for now, guys. Have a great one. Diecast Buffet. Congratulations, Tyler Reddick. Hopefully Chase Dillick doesn't take another L at Talladega. Signing off.